Hi, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to use UI Browser from Fiddlesoft and use it along with Keyboard Maestro to automate tasks like checking a checkbox or seeing if a checkbox is checked. I'm going to fumble through this because I don't have time to do it really well, but I wanted to at least do it. So if you go to Google and you search for UI Browser, you'll find it as probably the first hit. If you go to the website, you'll see a 1990s looking website and um, you can download a 30-day free trial. If you decide you want to get it, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. I think it's $55, but it's worth it. And I'll show you why. Hopefully, I'll show you why. So when you first get it, um, it comes up something like this. And one of the first things you have to do is make sure that in System Preferences, it's granted accessibility. That's so that it can look at the checkboxes and stuff like that. And then the first thing you want to do is you want to, there's a drawer that opens up down here. And you want to set it to attributes is probably what you're normally looking for. So then you run the application that you're looking to script. And I've got Handbrake running here doing something. Um, but that's okay, we can do this while it's running. And as an example, I thought I'd show you how to find this little checkbox here and see if it's checked and check it. So in UI Browser, you want to switch to Screen Reader. What that does is anything you move your cursor over, it reflects. You don't really care right now, you just want to put your cursor over what you care about. And then you notice here it says hold Command key to lock UI element and, and screen hotkeys are turned off. Okay, whatever. Hold Command key is the important thing. So you put this over what you want, because notice how this changes as you move the cursor. So when you find what you want, hold down the command key. I'm still holding the command key, and I do find in UI browser. So once I click that, I release the command button. This is the hierarchy of the thing that we just found over here, the check button. And if we look at it, we can see that um, value is zero. I suspect that's what changes. Let's find out. Yes, value is what changes. Um, so that's what we're looking for. So here's all here's the hierarchy, but you're going to want to do it in AppleScript. So what you'll do is you go, this is UI Browser, and in UI Browser's AppleScript menu, we want to get value of selected element. And depending on how you have this set up, it'll come up in some sort of window. And so what you want to do is, in a script editor, get the script editor going, and take this, copy it, and paste it into here. And as soon as you run it, which is the first mistake you're going to make, you're going to get an error like that, and you don't have any idea why. Well, that's because what you really want to do, the first thing is when you, and you'll learn this, but when you go into um, UI Browser, you want to get um, the tell block wrapper short. Okay, so that gives you that, and I'll paste it in here. And basically, like I said, it's the tells that are necessary for Apple Script. And notice it says you um, insert scripting statements here. So then when you get this thing, you put it in here, and you run it, and it tells you the result is zero. You notice that it, it brought ham, handbrake to the foreground. It has to do that um, in order to get the UI elements. So um, that's what this activate application is for. So notice that our value is zero. And if we check it and run this, it says our value is one. So we know that that works. So if all we want to do is see if it's checked, we're done. So we can use this in um, Keyboard Maestro. Use my standard little place to put stuff like this. We want to run an Apple script. So we will take this, paste it in here. And right now I'm just going to display the results in a window so we can see that it works. And remember, this also has the activate in it. 
if you're going to do this from like a hotkey and you know that your application is running when you press a hotkey, then you don't have, you don't need the activate. Um, but right now, since we're running this from inside Keyboard Maestro, we need to make sure that Handbrake becomes the active application before this does anything. So we'll run it. And we see that it returns zero. If we check it, run this again, see that it returns one. So we know that that's working. So if you're going to do some logic based on that, you would say the results to a variable, okay? And then you can do um, an if statement, and you can either use a text condition, or in this case, since we know that it's a zero or one, you can just do a calculation condition, and we will say that, okay? So basically that's saying if this variable has a non-zero value in it, then it's checked. Display some text, window, and say checked. Otherwise, I'm holding down the command key to duplicate that while I'm dragging, by the way. Okay. So, and I'm going to, um, this is in the status menu. So, here's an example of when you don't need activate application. So now, since we've got this in the menu, we will do our thing here. It will tell us it's not checked. It's based on that if statement. And now we will do it again. And checked. So we know that, that that's working. So one thing that you can do with this is you can also uh, check things like test, test for things like enabled. And you could do a loop, pause until, and wait for something to become enabled. When you load files into Handbrake, it disables everything and goes through and looks at each of the of the files, and that takes a little bit. And so if you want to do some action after that's done, you can find the UI reference using UI UI browser to this, look for the enabled, um, and keep checking the enabled until it becomes enabled, and then you know it's done doing all that kind of processing. So that's one of the things that you can do. Um, the other thing you can do is you can actually set the value. You'll notice that things slow down when your UI browser is running. That's because it's doing a lot of work. So you want to shut it down when you're done if that annoys you. But um, So we want to... I guess it won't let us set the value. Well, you, we can say click. This message is telling me that I've got something in here and um, do I realize that? And I don't care. So that's how you do it. You would click it, and that'll work as good as anything. So let's copy that, and we'll put it in here, and we will say, if it's not checked, then we will execute an Apple script. Oops, we need all of this stuff, don't we? We need the tell block and everything. We could do this in script editor, but I've done this enough times to know that this is going to work fine. Famous last words. Okay, so we're basically saying if it's not checked, if it's uh, not checked, then check it. And we don't have to test for checked or whatever. That that's just showing you all the different things that you can do. So um, we'll go back here. It's not checked. We will run it. And look, there it is, checked. So that's how you use UI browser. It's very very useful. Uh, there's lots of things you can find out just by looking through these things and looking at attributes and other things, but usually what I just showed you is all you really care about. I mentioned enabled. Here's enabled right here. That's a very common one that I do. Anyway, that's, that's all I'm going to show you. Sorry this isn't more professional, but I really didn't have the time.